everybody. Welcome to the Health Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Kevin Davis, and I'm joined by your other host. Howard Jacobson. Hello, Kevin. Hey, I hope you're that direction from me on the video. <laughs> yeah. I just looked like that, like, there's Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? I was here a minute ago. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's Zoom. We're, we're just virtual anyway. We're just electrons. We are not real. Yes. I am pretending to be joined today by... Howard. <laughs> okay. So uh, there was a question that came up in a coach training recently. And someone, one of the coach trainees who's been working with people said, hey, I had a really hard session. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, oh, well, tell me about it. I said, well, the person just was doing everything right. They weren't having any problems. They were achieving their goals. They were totally happy with the way things were going. And I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny, like that was a hard coaching session. Yeah. Right. So let's, what, 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 do, you, what do you think? What, what do we do when something like that happens? What do we or what should we? <laughs> I well, think we mostly overthink it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ideally. Like what, yeah. Um, I mean, the first thing I want to say is, that's okay. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good if we, you know, if they're doing the thing that we're essentially getting paid to help them do. Uh, you know, the thing that, that comes to mind to me, and it's, and it's interesting that this is the topic that we decided to discuss because I kind of had this in my head a little bit today, um, that we say all the time, is if you're working too hard or if you're if you're working you're working too hard yeah and and i think it really applies here because we want to be doing something and you know ap applying some you know magical tool to uh to, to make something seem uh a new and shiny and and interesting to the person in every conversation uh but in reality we're helping you know our real role is to help them do the things that will lead them toward the goals. And that's, you know, in this case, that's what apparently was happening already. Yeah. So, you know, the first thing I want to say is like, awesome. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think part of it comes from, we, we live in a time for money culture. Hmm. Yeah. So a lot of coaches charge by the minute, essentially. Right. Right. Well, if you want to work with me for, for once a week, for half an hour, it's this much. If you want an hour, it's this much. If you want one session, it's this much. So we think of it in terms of we're getting paid for our time. Mm -hmm. And that's how I used to think, too. And when I was, when I was working with a lot of corporate clients uh, and entrepreneurs who are incredibly busy people, mm -hmm. and they would often cancel the call. I, I used to coach for an hour. And like they didn't have an hour. <laughs> They're, they're having a crisis of the day. And I'm sitting there going, boy, you know, you'd be so much more effective if you just talked to your damn coach. <laughs> and, <laughs> and of course, you know, they, they knew what they needed. And when I discovered, when I learned and practiced how to get results in 30 minutes, my first thought was, well, I'm going to cut my rates in half. <laughs> and then my second thought was, are you nuts? Like, yeah. you've just become more valuable. Right. And, and, and at that level, people understand that, that they're paying you for results. And in fact, if I were able to do it in two minutes, they should pay me even more, not less. Right. Well, yeah, because you're not only are you accomplishing the goal, but you're also saving them 58 minutes. And just imagine, especially at that level, when you're doing that type of coaching, what can they do with that 58 minutes? Right. And, and, and of course, there's never 58 minutes, but going from an hour right. to 30 minutes, you know, as yeah. Peter Bregman points out, you're also modeling a bias towards action that can be very helpful to other people. If we're relentlessly focused on efficiency and progress and action, that's contagious. Hmm. Yeah. So the first, you know, the first thing I would say to people is like, that's not a problem. And you, right. you know, you could, you're still earning, like people are worried, like, well, what if they don't think they're getting anything out of it? Well, it kind of depends on how you market yourself. If you market yourself as the more time you spend with me, the more valuable it is, <laughs> um, you're setting yourself up for that. If you market yourself as these are the results you're going to get, then them coming in and saying everything's working perfectly, 
means that you're, you should feel better about yourself and not worse because you can't help them in this moment because they don't need any help. Then you could just say, see, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing well, wrong with saying, great. Should, should, we t should we set up a time for next week? Yeah, you or, know, and I, yeah, go ahead. you know, well, I was just going to say, like, I would maybe in that case, and, and I do this with the, to the text coaching even, I kind of lean toward uh, the FAST assessment that we've mentioned recently. Uh, was that last week, maybe even, that we talked about the FAST assessment? I lean toward doing these positive FAST assessments. Like, okay, great, you're doing all these things. What's a specific time that we can talk about in the last week or, or two weeks since we last spoke where you were successful at achieving a goal of yours or, or at fighting through, you know, in a particular situation? And let's do an assessment on that and try to learn from the positive. Yeah, I think uh, you know, there's a whole branch of consulting called appreciative inquiry, which was based on the revolutionary idea that we learn more by looking at our successes than by looking at our failures, right? And we see this all the right. time in coaching that if we ask someone, okay, I can't plan ahead to make my food. Is there any area in your life where you do plan ahead and it works? Hmm. Oh yeah, you know, my finances, our vacation, right? And then they'll give you their recipe for planning success. So I, lo I love that. We even, we even coined a name for it, uh, the fun fast, Yeah. <laughs> right? As opposed to the, uh, another fucking fast assessment, which is <laughs> the thing that they don't, you know, like, oh, you know, I screwed up again. I ate a pepperoni pizza. And now let me dig deep into the shame to discover what happened. But there's no resistance to, you did awesome. Let's, let's uh, deconstruct that and learn something. The, the, the thing and the reason why I go towards something like that, too, is that I don't want to just be a cheerleader and say, you know, I mean, of course, I do want to celebrate with a with a woohoo, you know, you, you did what you set out to do this week. But I don't just want to be there to say, rah, rah, you did it. I want to actually, you know, accomplish something and gain some benefit out of, um, you know, what they're doing. And so. You know, the other thing to me that comes to mind is you sort of mentioned how you market yourself. And this kind of comes down to sort of a business thing as a coach. Do you sell, okay, one session is X number of dollars. And if so, how much is it supposed to last? Or do you sell? I love doing things on a monthly basis or on a, you know, a uh, periodic basis rather than a session by session. Uh, sort of a payment. Um, yeah, because again, we're what? What are we really selling? Right, we're not selling spend quality time with me. Yeah. Right. This isn't you know this isn't a massage. Yeah. I, I was just reading about uh, cuddleries, which I guess have gone away in, in COVID. But it's like a business where people will just cuddle you in a non-sexual way, because we all need hugs and cuddles, and people are lonely, and you know it's yeah. good for your health. Yeah. Um, but like, I could see doing that on, on, a, on a, you know, pay for time basis. Right. But, but the reality is that coaching, the, the time that I spend with my clients is the least important time. Yeah. Right? It's, it's what they, it's like a piano teacher, right? It's, if they don't spend any time practicing between lessons, it doesn't matter how good the piano teacher is. Right. Um, Right. So I think you know, there's, there's a few things we can do when there's nothing to do. So one of them, I, I love that, that, that fun fast, you know, the fast yeah. assessment so people can turn a good day into good data. Yeah. Right. Because it's not always, you know, it's not always going to go great. Right. So to help them um, not to say, oh, well, you're doing fine now, but just, just wait until the shit hits the fan. Wait until next <laughs> week. Wait until you know, quarterly reviews, wait until, you know, whatever, not to not to undermine them or cut their legs out from under them. But if they're feeling particularly strong to do some like, here's a good time to do some contingency planning. Great. What what yeah. have you learned in the past week that you can apply, you know, or what are some situations that might become challenging uh, in the future? And if we're feeling good, we can approach those without the fight or flight complex kicking in. So that can also be a really valuable uh, use of that time. Yeah, I like that, you know, the, the fast assessment, like I mentioned, is, is one thing that you can do, but it does sort of, 
I don't know, at times if you don't push into some, you know, a specific contingency plan, it can just kind of fall flat there that they just think about it, but they don't actually apply it as well. Um, so, you know, you know what I mean? Um, and so doing the contingency planning like this, if you actually set out, okay, here's what I've learned and here's how I can apply it in a case where your mind is at ease, it's going to be much easier to, you know, really learn and develop those skills and be ready to use them when time comes. Right. And another thing I like to do when people come in really happy is for a lot of people, especially around health, they, they're, they're, they're surprised when they do well, right? People aren't surprised when they get in their car and turn the ignition and the car turns on and they step on the gas <laughs> and the car moves. They're like, yeah, okay. And doing things for our health in a lot of ways is exactly the same, right? But like, you know, you get somebody eating better, right? Mm -hmm. To us, it's a law of physics. It's like gravity, right? Um, you know, you you know, thermodynamics and calories, if it's about weight loss, or mm -hmm. blood glucose or whatever, we're like, of course, if you do this, it'll work. But people yeah. don't really believe that. Or they believe it theoretically, but not about them. And so to take that feeling, it, it's almost like they're holding the balloon, and they're afraid it's, it's, uh, it's gonna like float away, or it's not real, to help them um, look at their progress to sort of like, okay, things are great. Let's, let's look at the arc. Let's look at how far you've come. Let's look at the things you've done to, to, to help instill it in their identity, as opposed to it being this, this thing outside of themselves that's just happened to them. Yeah, I love that. Cause you know, again, it goes back to something that I believe it was last week we spoke about just that goal of setting an identity of becoming this person that you want to be. And, um, you know, if we can help to instill that along the way, step by step is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, if there's a worry that the person has just solved all their problems, and they don't need your coaching anymore. Um, yeah. Good. <laughs> right? From from a business perspective, it may feel bad that you're helping, right? Like, oh, I'm too good. It's like, you know, my business model is not, uh, you know, planned obsolescence. Like, right. I sold people a washing machine and it lasts for 30 years and that's not a sustainable business. You know what? Helping people is a sustainable business. So if yeah. you find that people are succeeding and they're achieving their goals and you're like, you know, I think maybe you don't need me anymore. Like, they're certainly going to be more likely to recommend you, to refer others to you. And just having the confidence to know that you're sort of, good at what you do will make you much more attractive. So it's being good is not a marketing problem when you're a coach. It might be good. It might be a marketing problem if you're selling a, a hard good. And, you know, right. No, but there's, you know, in, in what we do, there are plenty of people out there to help. And, you know, so essentially striving toward working ourselves out of a job is really kind of the goal. Yes. Yes. So to, to, so to, for us to honestly celebrate their independence, like their success really means we're doing our job. And, you know, we can always explore, all right, you've done great. Is this all there is? Or is the person you are now looking to new horizons? Are there, are there bigger mountains you want to climb? And can we work on together? Right. And you may find that's the case. I mean, I know, for myself, that's, that's always been the case. It's like, at first, it's let's get a little healthier, or let's lose X number of pounds. And then all of a sudden, you lose some of those pounds. And you're like, Oh, well, I want to, you know, run 10 miles, or I want to climb that big mountain or whatever it is. And there's always a new goal or a new higher loftier goal that you can work towards. Right? Yep. And the other thing I'm thinking about right now is a lot of times when people achieve new healthy behaviors, they do it at the expense of other healthy things, like social things. Like, okay, now right. I've really gotten this, this thing under control, and I'm not going out on Wednesday nights to the bar with my friends. I'm not hanging out at the break room at work because of the donuts. Yeah. Um, and I would encourage people at that point to up your social game, 
to reintegrate the healthy, the soft determinants of health, not necessarily the specifics, okay, I'm running and I'm eating broccoli. But if there are ways in which you had to separate yourself from others in order to do it, you know, maybe you're, you're really happy because you're, you're healthy, your blood glucose is good, um, your C-reactive protein is down, you're feeling better, and you're not, you're not entirely like thrilled with your life. Right, like you're a little depressed or you feel alienated. Like those are also determinants of health that we can right. uh, that we can help them with. And people often, you know, people don't think about those things as much as they think about the discrete, concrete, uh, reductionist uh, determinants like like food and exercise. But who really wants to uh, be so much healthier and live longer if you're not <laughs> going to yeah. enjoy it with people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, when it comes to that case, then Howard, like, do you explicitly bring that up to them and, and kind of use that as a teaching moment? Um, what will I do? I'll reflect back to them how happy they sound right now and maybe say mm -hmm. something like, you know, how's your, forget about the health part. How's your life going? Are you, are you happy? Are you doing things you enjoy? Uh, do you have satisfying social connections, you know, and it can be a little hard in these days. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. But some, you know, sometimes you can still get the sense that people are dissatisfied with their lives and beyond, you know, as health coaches, I think we can go there be just as if you, you wouldn't, you know, if you're a fitness coach, but you're, you know, you know about fitness, but then they're coming to you for fitness, you'll still talk about nutrition. Right. So I feel like for us health coaches, we should still talk about social support, um, about empathy, about altruism, uh, about finding pleasure in life, right? meaning, connection, because that's also directly uh, a determinant of health and longevity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we discussed the, you know, the, the different aspects, the, the menu movement and mindset are kind of the three aspects of, uh, of a person's health or of a person's lifestyle that we try to mention and, and work on with them. And that's definitely part of the mindset um, in someone's life. And, you know, it occurs to me that I think by the time you would get to that point, you probably have enough of a rapport and enough of a relationship built up with this person that it, it certainly makes sense that you could just, you know, kind of say, especially the way that you present it, like, Hey, how's, how's everything else going? You know, how, how is the social part of your life going and, and discuss from there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, as, as, as health coaches, we're typically paid by an individual to work on an individual, but health is not an individual phenomenon, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's a collective phenomenon. Um, so to understand that as far as much as people can do on their own, there's far more that we can do together. Right. Uh, you know, and one of the things that I love about health coaching is that the people that I work with can become the lead domino in their yeah. social circles. Right. Just like, you know, you, you created a group in Charleston, right? Josh started doing things in Thibodeau. Um, if I had any friends, I would do stuff with them here, you know, <laughs> um, you know, so that we can, you're we not can supposed have, to do things now anyway. No, nah, no. Nah. So we can have much, <laughs> much greater leverage yeah. you know, on the world through working with these individuals. Well, it makes, I mean, it certainly makes, um, you as an individual feel better and, and, you know, your life feel more complete too. When you can, when you can do that, even if it's simply just looking out there on, Facebook or, you know, wherever it is that you can find other like-minded individuals um, and, and having that connection. So you're not just sitting in this little bubble in your house of like, okay, I'm eating healthy and I'm not doing all these other things. and No one else is here. <laughs> right. It can feel pretty isolating. So. Right. Right. It's about, you know, quality times quantity. Yeah. Right. Huh? Uh, that's, that's all I got. You got any, any closing thoughts? No, I just, uh, you know, 
am kind of whirling around in my head here at the end there about just this idea of kind of, I think about Dan Butner's work with the blue zone stuff and how now as, as a company, they go out and try to create these blue zones in all these mm. different cities and they work with local governments and things. And, um, that's sort of, you know, the type of thing that we want to create as health coaches and that maybe we can um, encourage our clients to work on building a network or a, or, a, or a friend group or a family group that includes, you know, going and running together, going and walking together, eating together and, and all these sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we, you know, we can... Um... We can engage in very noble and global work, one client at a time. And, and when they come to us happy, it's a, that's a perfect opportunity, I think. Yeah, for sure. So, cool. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, th thanks for uh, bringing up the topic, whoever it was that asked that question to Howard. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, right. And everybody that's listening, uh, thank you so much for sticking with us uh, for this conversation. And through, we're at 20, past 25 now, aren't we? Episodes into the podcast. We really appreciate all the support. Um, if you want to continue to support us, you could head over to whether it's iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to your podcast. Give us a review, a rating. Those, those always help with kind of keeping things moving, keeping the momentum going. Mm -hmm. Share with any friends or, or family who are coaches or healthcare workers or anybody that wants to coach um, yeah. and they, send us any questions. Yeah, they can't rate us separately, right? Uh, no. They can't give you five no. and me two. Well, they'd probably be the other way around. So uh. that's, I made sure to set it up so that it would have to be together. All right. Well, so you just average it out or whatever. Yeah, I'm just going to ride your coattails. <laughs> give well. me the five. No. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thanks so much. And we will talk to you next time. And remember what we said earlier. If you're working, you're working too hard. Ah, love it. All right. See you later, Kevin. Bye.